Welcome to the Destiny Church Tees Valley podcast. As you listen, it is our prayer that you were transformed through faith, hope, and love. Today, uh, in our series today, um, I want us to look at something that is countercultural. It's something that often, for, for most of us, are brought up uh, th- to, to think differently to what God's Word talks about uh, on this subject. Um, but God promises us that if we do this and we take this on board, that, uh, that it will add to our life, it will enable us to be uh, what we can't be otherwise, it will enable us to do what otherwise we weren't able to do. If we take this on board, it will help us with our fatigue, it will help us with our tiredness, with our busyness, Uh, it will help us with life generally and in every aspect of our life. It will help us uh, with issues like depression, Uh, when you get bad news, when things in your life um, are not going well, that if you implement this while things are good, it will sustain you through the difficult times, through the, uh, the hard times. And that is the concept of community, the concept of doing life together, of being together, uh, journeying through life together, and having people around you that, uh, that, that can uh, help you in such times. The problem is, is we live in a society that idolizes independence. It's kind of taught to us that actually, and so many times I see this, um, that, uh, that, that people feel that the, the issue in life, the goal in life is to be independent, to be financially independent, um, you know, to be able to kind of be independent and you not have to uh, be reliant on anyone else uh, in any sphere of life. The, the problem with that is, is that actually it sets you up to fail. It sets you up to have problems. And so if we want to be totally self-sufficient in life, it comes at a price. It costs you. And uh, and I know some of us in our personality, the way God has made us and gifted us, we can enjoy long time. Uh, It can often fill our batteries to have some time on our own. But actually, that even for those that would class themselves as Um, uh, as loners, they still need relationship, still need friendship, still need people to journey with life through. And so these apply to even the most introverted people, yes? And and so it is important for us to do that, um, to to, to take this on board. Uh, But the, the key that God wants us is for us to not be independent, but to be inter- dependent, so that we are dependent on each other. You see, we need each other. God has wired us that way, has created us that way, that we need each other. I need you, and you need me. We need each other in in our family life, in our work life, and in church life. We need other people, because God has wired us to live in community. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 5, it says, Since we are all one body in Christ, we belong to each other, and each of us needs all the others. In other words, God says community is not optional. In other words, it's not an option as to whether I'm going to be part of a church community. It it shouldn't be an option. It shouldn't be something whether we decide, oh, well, I'm going to be the part of it or I'm not going to be part of it. When you read the Bible, it is very clear from start to finish that God made us to want to to be in family. He's made us to be in two types of family. He's made us, but we were born physically into a family. That's God's best way. We know sometimes that we we don't have a choice over that. Sometimes people are born and, and they don't come into a healthy family. They don't come into a to a family situation, and there's all those things. But that's not God's best. And we know that that actually affects people mentally and emotionally when they're not brought up in a healthy family life. 
That's why Save Families is so important to us. Because, that's, because so many people in our society are brought up without having healthy community at home. And, um, and that's obviously why the Moses Project exists, because for many of them, if not for all of them, it's often a family background that causes them to be in the situation. But actually, for many of them, if not all of them, that get into, into these life-controlling issues, it's because they associate in a community that they want to be accepted in, and so they do what that community is doing. That, that's why people join gangs, because they're looking to belong. So in other words, it's wired into us. The difference is, is whether we choose a healthy community or a unhealthy community. So that's the difference in the way that God has wired us to have that. We need to have people in our life. Amen? And that, uh, that, that enables us to be what God wants us to be. You can't fulfill the purposes of God in your life unless you are doing life with other people, with other uh, believers. So we cannot be all that God wants us to be. We cannot do all that God wants us to do unless God is part of that process, but also that we are part of the body of Christ. Jesus formed the body of Christ. Jesus himself had a small group. You know, he had the crowds, but he, but he understood the importance of living in community, and he showed them how to live in that. So in order for us to do that, the, the benefits are uh, of living in, in, in community, and particularly, obviously, I'm talking about small groups. I'm talking about small group because, um, because you can't um, do the, 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 the things that God wants us to do in large group. Large group is important and, um, and it gives us like today, it gives us a bigger sense of who God is. Uh, it enables us to hear some teaching on it. But to do life together, you need a small group to be able to be part of that. You need a spiritual group to be part of it if you want to grow spiritually. And so the first thing that you need others for is to walk with you. You need people to walk through life with you. The Bible often compares life to a walk, uh, to, to, to a journey. And Colossians 2 says this, just as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Yes? It's a journey. You're not meant to sit still in life. You're meant to be going somewhere. You're meant to be growing spiritually. You're meant to be developing. Life is meant to be a journey. You're meant to be going somewhere with your life. Yes? Not just stagnant. Not just existing. Not just one day after the other. And not just sitting around. But God has got things for you to do. The New Testament talks about this. It talks about walking in wisdom. Walking in love. Walking in the light, walking in obedience, walk in the spirit. And, and so it's important that we understand this and we, uh, we get a hold of it. You see, who we walk with affects our life. The Bible says that bad company corrupts good morals, good character. Your character is influenced by the people that you spend your time with. The people that I spend my time with influences me. We can't get away from that. They're influencing us and we are influencing them when we spend time together. And it, it, our associations matter. And so we have got to be proactive and very careful about the people that we want to spend time with. That's why we always encourage everyone and show the importance of being part of a small group get with others that are on the same journey as you, that can help you, that can encourage you, that can speak into your life. Have you got somebody that can speak into your life? From a spiritual point of view, I feel is, is important. Now, when I'm talking about doing life together, I'm not talking about you need to be married. Because we have in this church, we have people who are single who are really well connected in community. And we have married people who are lonely. So marriage does not solve these issues of community. And unfortunately, we so often say that, don't we? And sometimes people will say, oh, 
such and such when we've married them that they're completers. That's a load of nonsense. Nobody that married, that you get married to can complete you. Yes, they may compliment you. They may be a good person to walk through life with and you're in covenant together. And one of the things about that kind of when it works well, a covenant relationship like that, it does mean that when you two are walking together, if one falls, the other can pick them up. And so it can be very effective, but it can also be very destructive. If you are married to someone who is, who is not helping you, who is walking in the, the opposite direction, who is causing conflict and things, I want to say to you, it's a nightmare. So it is important who we marry, yes? And, uh, and many a time I've seen people get married and I've thought, there's trouble ahead. Now, of course, you can't always say, because then A, they're not asking your opinion. B, it kind of, they don't want to hear it. But you see some of those things well ahead. And so if you, and you are probably able just to do the same. You're probably thinking, I know such and such that got involved in a relationship and you saw ahead the problems. Now, often you don't always see the problems, but sometimes you can see those is, if, if, issues coming along. Now, <clears throat> there are three good reasons why we should walk together. And I'm going to show a video um, that, uh, that, that Adam's going to hopefully press the button on. And uh, hopefully you will enjoy it. It's going to talk about, uh, in a funny way, uh, about it being safer in community. We are, uh, we are stronger in community. And, uh, and we are smarter when we're in community. Just watch this. to travel in groups. Take the bus. It's smarter to travel in groups. light entertainment but it is important that we travel in groups we walk together yes and that's what Amos 3 3 talks about it's it's smart to walk together through life amen and so um, there is a Zambian proverb that says this when you run alone you can run fast but when you run together you can run far and the issue is, is life is not a sprint. It is a marathon. It's a long journey. And so that's why we need to, to journey with other people. Yes, it's so smart for us. The other thing that uh, from nature that really is a powerful one is geese. When geese fly and they're, and they're emigrating, they fly in a V formation. And when they fly in the V formation, there's a number of things that happen. One of the things is, is right from the lead, lead bird, um, that as it's flapping its wings, it's creating a backdraft that actually enables the next bird 
and the birds behind it, each of them are creating a backdraft that enables all those behind them to be able to fly with less effort. In other words, the lead bird is taking, um, is taking most of the, uh, the, the pressure. The other thing about the geese is, is that they, all those that are behind the lead bird are honking affirmation. You'll hear them honking all the time. In other words, keep going, we can do this. And, um, and, uh, and that's important for us in life, is that we understand that together we help each other, we strengthen one another, and we need to be honking affirmation to one another, yes? Um, that, that's, I think, is, uh, is really important uh, for us to be able to, uh, uh, to, to understand that, um, the, 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 the way that they do it. And, but the other thing as well that I think is important, I was trying to remember what it was, and then... Um, was is that they take turns in leading. It's not the same bird that leads the whole way. And I think that's important for us in life, is to realize that actually somebody might take the lead, but actually they not only need the support, there's times in life when actually someone else takes the lead. And uh, that, that, that happens in, in the workplace, it should happen in every aspect of, of society. But it should happen in church particularly, is that we shouldn't be looking for certain people to be able to take the responsibility all the time, to be able to take in the flack all the time, taking the pressure all the time, leading the way. We need to be able to come up and to say, uh, and, and, and to offer that, and different people can lead in different ways at different times. I think that's important, yes? And so that's what team does, that's what um, community does is we see that we are in this together, yes? We're not following one person, and they're our kind of guru. We are in this together, and, um, and so we need uh, each other in that. So it is safer to be in groups, it is smarter to work in groups, and it is more supportive when we are together in groups. Amen? Proverbs 28 and verse 26 says this, only fools trust in what they think alone. Only fools trust in what they think alone. In other words, if you haven't got people around you to be able to point things out in your life and in your spiritual walk, then you're going to think you're doing okay. But actually, for all of us, we have blind spots. We have areas in our life that we can't see. Just like when you're driving down the road and a car can come past you or a motorbike or something, and you think, I never saw that coming because it's in the blind spot of your mirrors. And, um, and so it's important for us to realize that. You must have people in your life who can tell you when you're going off track. The question is, do you have someone in your life that will speak into your life, that you will listen to, because that's the aspect of community, is that you have people around you that you will listen to, that they can speak into your life and say, you're on the wrong path. You're going in the wrong direction. And it's important that we all have that. The Bible tells us that in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. The thing with walking together means that whenever you walk with someone, you have to alter your pace because we all walk in a different way. Um, if you just walk somebody, often, I don't know if you've seen, but you'll see somebody, you'll think, no, oh, that's such and such. No, no, that's not their walk. And you can actually know who people are if you know them well enough by the way that they walk. Now, when we first got married, Kath would have to run to keep up with me walking. Um, now is the other way, but anyway. Um, but it's important that we understand that you have to change the pace, don't you? So you might be able to, on your own, walk fast, but when you're walking with others, you have to change the pace. And, uh, and that's the, the key in, in community life, is when we're walking through life together, when we're in our connect groups together, we have to change sometimes the way we do things, the way we respond to other people, because we have got to connect in with them, and they have to connect in with others. It's a reciprocal thing that we do, and it's so important 
that we do that. In other words, when you're part of community, you have to learn to compromise. You have to learn to compromise. You won't learn compromise on your own. People that live on their own for any length of time so often get used to doing things their way. They think their way is the best way. But when they're coming to community and they're coming to relationship, there's often a clash because they are not willing to compromise. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18 says this, it is not good for man to be alone. It's not good for us to walk alone. And so, God hates loneliness. He wants us to be in his spiritual family. And so that is the antidote that God has given us. He's given us a physical family and he's given us a spiritual family. The physical family is for this life and it, and it, and it helps us. And it, 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 but we've got to understand that the spiritual family helps us spiritually and is going to last for eternity. You're going to have your spiritual family for a whole lot longer than in this life. You see, in this life, let's say you might live to be a hundred, but actually when you live in eternity, it's going to be trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of whatever of years, yes? It's this, this life is just preparation for eternity. And so we need to learn in this life to get connected with God's community, his church, more than everything else. Hebrews chapter 10 says this, let us not give up the habit of meeting together. You notice that? It's a habit. Let's not give up the habit of meeting together. Instead, let us encourage one another. I don't know about you, but when other people come to church on a Sunday or a part of the Connect group, I don't know about you, but I find it encouraging. And when people are missing, you think, oh, I wonder what's wrong with why, why, why they're not able. You know what I'm trying to say? And there's a care aspect, isn't there, in our connect groups? And if you're in a connect group, you'll notice if people are there or not there. You take an interest in them if it's a healthy connect group. Now, you could be a connect group and be unhealthy, and everybody's still doing their own thing. Um, so there's no guarantee of that. But if you're in it, you've got a chance for it to be healthy um, in, in, in that way because God's created us for community. You see, today, where we are, this is a crowd, it's not community. You're not able to have a conversation with everybody, not unless we spend a lot longer time, do you know what I mean? And things. So that's why small groups are important, because that's where you have somebody to walk with you through it, and someone who can uh, watch... Um, uh, watch your back. Because life is about achievement, uh, sorry, about relationships, not achievement. And too often, particularly I think the guys, we see life more about achievement than relationships. But it is about relationships. On our deathbed, nobody ever said, I wish I'd spent more time at the office. I wish I'd worked longer hours. They always wish that they'd spent more time with family and with friends, with loved ones. You see, 1 Corinthians 14 says this, and I love it in the message paraphrase, it says this, when you gather, each of you should be prepared with something useful for everyone. Sing a hymn, teach a lesson, tell a story, lead a prayer, provide an insight. Take your turn with no one person taking over. That way you all learn from each other. Let me ask you, does that sound like a Sunday morning? It doesn't, does it? But in our connect groups, each one can get involved. Everyone can contribute. And that's one of the things that, that we're always banging the drum on to our connect group uh, leaders is saying, get people involved, delegate. Why? Because when, you are in, when you've got a job to do in the group, when you bring something, when you contribute, you have ownership, don't you? Yes? And that is important for each of us that we can come with them. We can, that's the way we come with our prayer requests. We come with, we talk about our, our, our week and the things, the successes, the great things, the hurts. And I think that is so important for us that we need them both. So we need large group worship and we need small group fellowship in our life. In the New Testament, it was temple courts and the homes. They met 
the teaching in the temple, but they also met together in homes. They understood the importance of that. Ephesians chapter 4 says this, as each part, it's talking about the body of Christ, now the church, as each part does its work, it helps the other parts grow. So Christ's whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. God wants us to be healthy and growing, yes? And you can't learn that except in community life, yes? In other words, you can't learn community without community. <laughs> you can't learn relationships unless you're involved in relationships. And so it's, it's so key to us. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 9 says this, Open your homes to each other without complaining. Oh, that's a good one, isn't it? Open your homes without complaining. What's complaining? Well, that means you're making excuses. You're making excuses. You can't go, oh, my house is dirty. My house is things. Do you know what I mean? There's all sorts of excuses I've heard over the years of why people can't have um, a small group, a few friends. I want to say to you, can you group, can you fit three people into your front room? You, know, you don't have to be a large group. You know what I'm trying to say? You can have a small group. It's about having a few friends that you can grow together. And that's why with our connect groups, we're constantly saying we want to grow larger and smaller at the same time. We want to grow larger uh, in more and more people being added to us. We won't want to keep growing smaller because we want to keep the small groups, the friendships and the relationships are so keen to what we do. Amen? So now, let me just say, I'm not talking about small groups that are doing their own thing. Some, you know... Sometimes people are involved in a small group that's not connected. It all connects in. Um, for, I'm talking about our connect groups because they're connected to the church. There's fellowship. There's, there's connection. We need that, yes? So having a small group where you do your own thing, and I've seen small groups uh, over the years where people kind of have, and there's people meet, and there's somebody from that church, and somebody from that church, and whatever. There's no accountability. There's no um, options. They're just doing their own thing. That's just, uh, that's just um, now, you know, even in persecuted churches and countries like China, um, where there is very little, they don't want to have a lot of, don't want the, the authorities to know where they're meeting and all that. They're still connected. They meet in small groups, they pray together, they fellowship together, but there's, there's still a connection with others in the body of, of Christ. And so that is so important with us. Secondly, so first of all, community is God's answer to loneliness um, so that we can walk together. Secondly, um, community, um, it, we need community because we need others to work with us. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 says, God made us to do good works, which he planned in advance for us to live our life doing. God has created each one of us. He's given us a specific shape. He's given you spiritual gifts. He's given you natural gifts. He's given you passions, things that you love, the things that maybe you hate, uh, these things that you desire. Uh, he's, given you, um, he's given you a personality, and each of us, our personalities are so very different. Um, and that's so interesting. He's given you life experiences and skills and abilities, and he wants you to use them. He's created them and he's orchestrated many of those things in order for you to be able to use them in service for other people. Amen? So that's what he's looking for. It, you know, God was involved in where you were born. He orchestrated the street you would be born in. He orchestrated the parents that you would have. He's, he's, he's involved in every aspect of your life. And so often we take it for granted and we think God's not involved in them. But God has a purpose for every one of our lives. The question is, is whether we want to fulfill that, whether we will fulfill that. And you're never going to be able to fulfill the purpose of God, the, the assignment that God has for you, without community. It will always require a team. It will require people around you to help you with that. We are all called to ministry. There is no exception. Not all pastors, but we're all called to serve, to minister to others. Whenever you use your gifts and your talents and your abilities and the knowledge that you have uh, to help someone else, that's 
ministry. That's serving other people. And so we need to learn to do that. We are going to serve for all eternity. We are going to do four things in heaven. There's only one of the purposes of God that we won't do in heaven, and that's evangelism. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna fellowship together. We're going to have, uh, you know, we're going to be connected to one another. We're going we're gonna to be able to be in ministry. We're going to be serving one another. We're going to be loving one another. Um, you know, we're going to be able to do that. We're going to be worshiping. We're going to worship God. Um, and and, I'll do, and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna be growing all the time. We're going to get taught by the greatest teacher the world has ever known. There's no, we're, going to, we're going to learn, that's what he talks about, that we're going to find so much out. And I'm interested on how God, I think God is going to kind of uh, do a kind of a slow movie through life. And can you imagine when it gets to me and you're all going, oh yes, now we get to know what he's really been up to. <laughs> But God, I think, I could be wrong, but I think he'll maybe show some of the things and say, yeah, we learn and how he was involved in our lives. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? Might be scary, of course, if we showed certain things. But, but when, we, when we serve together, when we're connected together, um, we, it, it's, it's one of God's ways to stop us getting fatigued, getting tired, getting exhausted. And I know some of you are maybe feeling tired or feeling exhausted. I want to say to you, the answer is community. The answer is relationship. The answer is having others because when other people are on board and you're doing it together, the burden is shared, isn't it? So for example, if on a Sunday morning when people are involved in stewarding, if it's just left to the same person all the time, then, then of course it's, it, it, it's an opportunity for that person to get stressed and to get burnt out. But actually, if there's other people who come on and say, no, I'd like to help you, or same with the text, same with the worship team, and any of the things, our children's work, when other people are involved in ministry and they say, count me in, I'm going to be a part of that ministry, you're, you're fulfilling God's purpose for your life, and you're helping build community. There's things you'll only ever learn when you're on a team. When you get connected into those things, because you, you know, that's where you learn to be faithful. Are you going to be reliable? Are you going to be loyal? Are you going to turn up when days when you don't feel like turning up? They're all things that you learn in these aspects. You shouldn't have to learn these things uh, in, uh, when you get in your job. It's amazing how many people I know, and I talk to business leaders and the amount of business leaders and some of the things that they have to deal with, and I think it's for the simple reason that some of these people, uh, we've got a generation growing up that have not learned the best basics. They've not learned to be loyal. They've not learned to turn up on time. They've not learned that there's commitment uh, involved in life, that if they want to get where they need to be, it's not just going to fall out of a tree. It's not just going to be called an apple. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4 says this, two people are better than one because they get more done by working together. Is that not true? We get more done together. And I want to say to you, it's a lot more fun when you're doing it with other people. Yes, even Mother Teresa, it's, um, some people think, oh, I'll be like Mother, Mother Teresa. I'll be kind of, uh, even Mother Teresa had a team. Yes, she had the sisters of charity that were helping her uh, every day. Now, individually, I can't make a big difference. But together, we can make a massive difference. And it's only together we can make the difference that God wants us to do. So God, community is God's answer to fatigue. Amen? Galatians 6 verse 10 says, Every time we get the chance, let us work for the benefit, benefit of all, starting with the people closest to us, in the community of faith. In other words, we start with a church family. That's where our commitment starts. That's where we serve first. So we need people to walk with us and we need people to work with others. And we also need people who will watch out for us. Yes, I need people who will defend me. I need people who will watch my back. I need people who will look out for me. And, and, and you need the same. We want people around us who actually, they're not trying to bring us down, but they're trying to watch out for us. They're looking out for us. They're wanting to strengthen us. They want to say, oh, do you know this? This could be dangerous. This could be a, a, a situation, yes? So we, that's where we do that. So like, for example, like last night, I was out for a walk 
on my own. And, um, and walking on my own, I, I walked into a branch of a tree, which nearly took my eye out. Um, now, all I'm saying is if we'd have been together, first of all, if it, I'd have been in a serious way as a result of that, I would have had somebody with me that could have helped. But I was on my own, yes? So all I'm saying to you is, is when you're on your own, you're vulnerable. But when you're together, somebody else might have said to you, so watch out that branch. Because we all see different things. When I sit here on a Sunday morning, I see things that you don't see, but you'll see things that I don't see. And together we help each other. We make it uh, better. Amen. So we need people to watch out for us. Philippians 2 and verse 4 says, look out for one another's interests, not just your own. Now, if that isn't a countercultural verse, I don't know what is. How many times do we go through life and most people are looking out for their, themselves, their best interests, how it works for them? Yes, that's what our culture is telling us all the time. It's all about you. Are you happy? Do you feel that way? Do you know what I'm trying to say? You know, what's best for you? Do what you feel like doing. What's... And it's not about that. God has not designed us that it's about our interests and our desires and, our, and the things that we want. But that's that verse says, look out for one another's interests, not just your own. Yes? I think that's important for us. <clears throat> so we want, things to, we want people to look after our stuff, do we not? If I go on holiday, I'll probably tell a neighbor or tell someone and say, I'm going on holiday, would you watch it out, watch out for me? If I'm going to do that with things, do we not really want the things that are really valuable, which is me my spiritual journey, do you not really, for you, want somebody to watch out for you? If we want people to watch out for our goods, which actually are, are nothing compared to who we are and how valuable we are. When you're in a car, you do not know if your tail light's out. You need somebody to tell you. And that's life with us. We need somebody to be able to say, do you know you've got a tail light out? You've got a problem there. You've got something here. You need, to, you need to be able to do it. Yes, we need to keep being concerned about each other as the Lord's followers should be. Hebrews 13 and verse 1. We are family. Yes, you see, each of us have an enemy. We have an enemy. Satan is out for you and me. The moment we get out of bed, he's on your case. He's been planning, he's preparing, all he's interested in is hurting you, harming you. He wants to isolate you, you know, like we saw um, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the video, um, you know, the, the, uh, the crab that's isolated. The enemy wants to come in and he wants to take you, but when you're in community, you are safe. And that's why we need each other. Satan is not really interested in you and me. He knows he wants to hurt God. But he knows he can't hurt God. He can't touch God. So what does he do? He tries to get at God's children, God's family, God's wife, the church, the bride of Christ. That's what happens in church life. People often try to get to me and they'll try to go through Kath or they go through faith or they go, do you know what I'm trying to say? So they maybe can't get to me. They know I'm not going to be phased by it, being a bit thick-skinned as I am. But, uh, but they'll try others because if they get to my wife, they've got to me. And that's what Satan does. He's after you, not because he's interested in you, but because he wants to hurt God. And so we need to be aware of that. I was reading a report on oh, 9-11. 9-11, it was the commission that reported it. And there are parallels between this. Maybe you can see them. Between our battle and uh, uh, the, uh, the, you know, the battle against terrorism that the Americans had and the spiritual battle that we're involved in. This is what it said. It says, we learned about an enemy who was sophisticated, patient, disciplined, and lethal. Does that not sound like the devil? The enemy rallies broad support by redressing political grievance, but its hostility towards us and our values is limitless. Eh? Satan's hatred for us is limitless. Its purpose is to rid the world of religious pluralism, it makes no distinction between military and civilian targets. Collateral damage is not in its lexicon. Satan doesn't care who gets hurt. Yeah, he just wants to hurt. We learned, it went on, we learned that we did not understand how grave this threat could be. So we did not adjust our plans and practices to deter 
or defeat it. Doesn't that describe a lot of Christians that don't plan and don't prepare for Satan's attacks, for the enemy, his, uh, his cunningness in our life? That's what he does. We don't prepare to handle temptation, to handle the difficulties in life. And they went on this. The test before us now is to sustain the unity of purpose and meet the challenges now confronting us. We need to design a balanced strategy for the long haul to attack terrorists while at the same time protecting ourselves against future attack. The only thing we have to be able to protect ourselves that God has given us is community. He's given us community so that we can, uh, when, when attacks come, we've got each other from that. The Bible says the gates of hell will not prevail against us. We've got to understand that gates are defensive. We are on the attack. Yes, and, and God has said that the gates of hell will not prevail because we are going to be victorious. We must not give up. We must keep advancing. And that's why God has put us in small groups so that we can be like little army uh, units to go together in that. Amen? I believe that's important uh, for us. So we'll move on to the fourth thing. So community is also God's answer, we've said there, to defeat. Um, and, and that's important uh, for us. I don't know if you've seen the, uh, there's um, uh, a movie called 127 Hours. I've seen another one called Solar Things. But these, uh, this one's about um, a guy who is climbing and, um, and uh, he gets trapped. He's on his own and, uh, and it, uh, he gets his arm trapped. And because he's got his arm trapped, he's, um, <clears throat> um, he can't get free. There's nobody to help him. And uh, the long story is, is and that's what it, it shows you, the, the, uh, the movie, is he has to cut his arm off to save his life. So in other words, when we're together, so even the professionals need people with them. We need to know that no matter how good or how long you've been with God, you need church family and you need community, yes? Because the inevitable things of life will come. So we need people to weep with us. That's the fourth point. We need people when we're going through a difficulty that people will weep with us. We are gonna, we're going to go through hardships. We're going to go through uh, times when we have bad news. We're going to go through times when we lose loved ones. We're going to go through all sorts of things. And I want to say to you, prepare now for the tough times. Get people around you. Get in community. That people that you know people shouldn't have to be in um, in hospital. Uh, with bad news, receiving bad news, whatever, on their own. That's why as a church, we, we are so keen that people are in community and in small group with that. You don't need 100 people around you. And if you're in hospital and going through a hard time, you don't need the whole church coming up. But you do need a few people that are close to you that will be, uh, will be with you. So we need to do that, yes? And I'm, let me just give you a practical thing. When you see a tear in your connect group or in a relationship you're with, that's a good sign that it's time to pray. It's a good time to say, let's bring this to God. It's a time to show care and to show love. Yes, we need to be happy with those who are happy and we need to weep with those who weep. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, encourage each other and strengthen one another. And lastly, we need others not just um, to... Uh, to, to, uh, uh, to walk with, to work with, to watch out with us, to watch out over us, um, and uh, to weep with, but we also need people to witness with us. We need people we, in team. Um, it, it's God's answer to fear when we are uh, with him. We have a life message. You have a life message. There are people that we can reach, but we can reach together. And that's why in our connect groups, we talk a lot about Net fishing, we want you to, to, you can catch more fish, you can catch figure, bigger fish, as it were. Uh, we can catch people, we can see people brought into the kingdom of God um, as we work together as a team. And, and that's it. Some people are good at bringing people and other good people are good at discipling them. Some people are good at encouragement. Some people are good at speaking prophetically into their life. You get all that and, and the, together we are able to be better. Amen? So those aspects, and uh, so we need people to walk with us, work with us, watch out for us. We need people to be weep with us, and we need people 
who will witness with us. Amen? That's what God is looking for us as in a church. If you're not in community, then get in community and realize that your commitment to that will encourage others. And what you give in, you'll get out. Amen? From that. Father, I just thank you for today. I pray for every single person that's here today uh, and for those that are online and for those that will watch it later. I pray, oh God, that today that your word would just go deep into each heart. I pray, Lord, for every single person that they would, if they've not got people, that, Lord, today they would join a small Christian community. Lord, if part of this church would be part of a connect group, uh, Lord, I pray that today even maybe the groups would be birthed, uh, Lord Jesus, as a result of this, that, Lord, that you would be glorified. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the wisdom in your word. We thank you for the understanding it gives us. We thank you for the knowledge that enables us. And we know, Lord, that our lives are built through wisdom, through knowledge and understanding. And so we say, Lord, today, thank you. Help us to put this into practice. We pray for those, Lord, that have taken themselves out of community. For those, Lord, for whatever uh, reasons, whether it's because of the worries of this life or whether it's because of the wrong things that they've done and they've not forgiven. Uh, Lord, or whether or not, Lord Jesus, for any uh, of the other, other possible reasons, I pray today that they would see and they would be drawn back into community to know you and to know your love and to know our love. We pray in Jesus' lovely name. Amen. Thanks for listening today. If this message spoke to you and you would like prayer, or perhaps this is your first time listening, then we'd love to connect with you at www.thedestinychurch.co.uk forward slash connect. You're welcome to join us every Sunday in person or online at 11am.